No, I'm petrified. It's like, I'm scared. It's not even a fear. I am deadly scared of birds. Out of all the things she could be scared of, she's scared of birds. <laughs> I'm Nally and welcome to The Nally Show, where I help you beat your battles and be the best version of you. Are you someone who lives in fear? Fear of the unknown, perhaps? Or maybe fear from trauma? Something really bad that happened to you in the past and you're so scared it's gonna happen to you again? How do you not let that consume you? I, for one, feared that my cancer would come back which it did, but all the amazing things that I've accomplished and experienced in between all that and that I'm doing right now does not let cancer win. Today I am chatting with Svetlana, founder of Closet Freak Studio and Boutique. She teaches Afro twerk cardio to help women get fit and feel sexy. Everything about her screams fierceness, confidence, and fearlessness, but her powerful qualities did not blossom overnight. Svetlana is a survivor of domestic violence, leaving her with wounds of anxiety, depression, and suicidal thoughts. Let's just say she's lived in fear for years. Now here she is managing several businesses. She's a mother of four. She's in a loving relationship. She gives inspirational talks and is constantly giving back to the community. Together we want to give you five tips so you can conquer your fear. So you can go do amazing things too. This is actually the first time we're meeting so she's coming over. She's gonna grab a drink and we will talk to you soon. So what would you like to drink? So Svetlana, you uh, own Closet Freak, right? Yes. What exactly is Closet Freak? Like, please give us, you know, the description. It's a lifestyle brand. It's a lifestyle brand. It's not just cosmetics. It's not just fitness. I created it a few years ago. I'd say in 2010. I was like, I was modeling. I was like, you know, I want to create my own thing. I don't want yeah. to be just that model that doesn't have anything to fall back on. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking of the name of a company, and I was like, Closet Freak. And my best friend started laughing. She's like, Closet <laughs> Freak, really? <laughs> <laughs> what does closet freak mean to you? Well, to me, it means people who are different. Anybody who doesn't conform to the norm. Yes. And that is what closet freak is to me. So you sell cosmetics? Yeah, I have natural cosmetics. I'm actually revamping everything and relaunching in July. Mm -hmm. And I don't test on animals. Mm -hmm. Very important. And yes. I don't have chemicals that cause cancer, which is very important. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, the fitness side of it and as well I'm creating a perfume that has no chemicals in it that's all natural so it's really a lifestyle okay. for people. I want people to have a healthier lifestyle and still be able to be beautiful. And she also teaches <laughs> twerk cardio. Yes. <laughs> Please, tell us what's twerk cardio like? Is it like you're really just twerking the entire time? So you have the afro cardio class which is really African dance, the drum beats and everything. Mm -hmm. And then we get down to the nitty gritty girl. <laughs> we have to get down to the nitty gritty. Everything you do is bold and fierce and mm -hmm. fearless. That did not blossom overnight, didn't it? No, it didn't. Uh -huh. It was a hard journey, a rough road. And that's why people who come sit in this studio, it's because we are here to reveal, you know, our vulnerability yeah. and, you know, our weaknesses who, that then turns into strength mm -hmm. because no one's just strong like that naturally. No, you're not born that way. You're <laughs> not born like that way, no. And that's why I want really thought it was important to share your story of how you became this beautiful, bold, strong, fierce woman. People don't really know, but you're actually a domestic violence survivor. Yes. What happened? How old were you? Uh, well, let me go back to when I met this man. Okay. I met him when I was 15 years old. We were high school sweethearts. Okay. And then when I was about 19, I found out that I was pregnant. I had my son, and my son was a couple months old, and I had decided, you know what? No more. Because in between that time, the abuse was escalating. It had already gotten pretty bad. He had already abused me with everything. But at 15 too? No, this was at 16. It started at 17. It got worse as I got older. Even when I was pregnant, he shoved me into a wall. My mother was trying everything to get us to break up. And, you know, when you're in love, you think this is what love is. My best friend was like, but if he loves you, he wouldn't beat you. And I was like, no, he does it because he loves yeah. me. Yeah. So it's the brainwashing. So I was like, you know what? Enough is enough. I can't do this anymore. I looked at my son. I said, one day he's going to really hurt me. He's going to kill me or my son. And then one day he decided to drive down with his friend. And he was like, you know, I want you to come and bring our son to sit, see my mother. We're going to hang out. So I saw his friend in the car. I was like, you know what? What can really happen? Yeah. I trusted it. I got my son in the car. We went, drove to New York. Everything was good. Got there. He's like, we're going to stay at my friend's house. Because it was late when we arrived anyway. We'll go yeah. see my mother tomorrow morning. Not a problem. I arrived at this huge Victorian house. And I'm going up all of these stairs to like an attic. But it was a bedroom in an attic. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, not a problem. So I settled in, went to sleep. In the morning, he was like, I'm going to come back after work and then we're going to go see my mother. 
but he locked the door. So I'm sitting there like, I can't get out. So I'm freaking out. There's no phone, no way of communication. And I was like, okay, what am I going to do here? So when he came back, I was furious. Yeah. And I'm like, I need to eat. I need to be able to have water, something. So he had a bag in his hand with some water and just like a few cookies. Yeah. And I'm breastfeeding a baby. So oh you need more than water and cookies to survive. And because I pushed back, and this was a huge guy. He was six foot eight. Okay. He pushed me against the wall and he choked me. And he said, if you even dare talk back to me, I will kill you. And I will throw our son out the window. So, sorry, it's, that's no. a tough one. And I said, okay, so how do I get away from this person? Yeah. And I was like, you know what, I have to be smart. I have to be smarter than him and I'm going to get out of this situation. Yeah. So every day I was just being very passive. Every day he came back, he locked me up, he came in, brought a phone. I was watching everything that he was doing. But every time he picked up the phone to make a phone call, he picked up our son and was holding him. Okay. So I wouldn't say anything or make a sound while he was on the phone. So it was just time was just passing and I only found out it was about three weeks and I only found out at that last day he slipped up. He left the phone plugged into the wall and I was like, hallelujah, my prayers have come yes. to apparition. I'm like, finally. And when he left, I waited. I saw, I looked, peeked out the window and I just watched him walking. I grabbed that phone, called my mother right away. Good. And right away she was crying. She's like, where are you? It's been three weeks. That's how I found out it was three weeks. Every day I was just praying. Every day he was beating me. He was raping me. I didn't want to sleep with him. It was like a daily thing that was going on. And I just wanted to stay quiet so that he wouldn't hurt our son. I just wanted to get out. What was going through your mind? How bad did you think? Did you think he wasn't going to kill you? I thought he was going to kill me. So I was afraid to sleep because the abuse wasn't just a couple of slaps in the face. He dislocated my jaw. That last day he dislocated me, I could barely speak. My jaw was killing me and I just got that strength. Okay. And I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. That's why I thought I was gonna die because yeah. I didn't know dislocated jaw, is he gonna leave me here to die? He's definitely not gonna take me to the hospital. Mm -mm. And it was just like that day, he just left the phone. I would say it was maybe about an hour. The cops came. The cops were all over okay. me with medics and everything. And they like, I saw them coming with SWAT and they got me out of that house. Before he was able to- Oh yeah, they went to arrest him at his job. And he went to prison- For two years. Yeah, two years. That's <laughs> not, that's not enough. No. And you said that the abuse escalated. Yeah. And you said you stayed with him because of love as yeah. well. But what, what do you think, why didn't you leave him before that? Like looking at you now, I guess you weren't the same person you were before. No. I am a completely different person. Throughout the years, I've dealt with many hurdles and obstacles in my life. Okay. Dealing with that and having to deal with the trauma of that, I went to seek help because of the rape, the constant rape. And I wound up getting high anxiety. I'm, I suffer with very high anxiety. And then I suffer with clinical depression. And what changed you? When did the transition happen? <laughs> How did you sit suddenly be like, I want to give back to the community and inspire the world like you do every day now? What was the epiphany? So two years ago when my son was born, I made a decision that I wanted to be happy. I wanted to find myself and be a better version of myself. Yeah. So I started doing the work. I started paying more attention to what I wanted to do. And I started taking natural vitamins. I started researching what I can take to make me happy. Started working out, cooking more, spending more time with my children, my yeah. friends, dancing. Yes, I love the dancing. dancing always helps. <laughs> I would say it was two years ago that I really found this person. So it's recent. Yes. The whole topic of today's interview is fear, right? Mm -hmm. yes. And I feel like having experienced what you did, how do you not live in constant fear? And for one, I wanted to ask you, what do you think is your biggest fear right now? My biggest fear is my new relationship. Because you must be a bit traumatized. How do you trust? How do you love? Well, that's the problem now is that we, tr we have discussions. The one thing I have to say about this relationship, I have never talked this much in my life. <laughs> and I have a lot of fears with my anxiety. It trips off something and my brain starts to run and all of my fears come and I have anxiety attacks and I'm like, wait, Sablana, hold on. Pay attention to the moment. Are you not happy? Mm -hmm. Does this man not treat you well? Mm -hmm. He makes you smile all the time. You are in love. Mm -hmm. Just be happy and live in the moment. And the fear just, I just push it away. And that's why Svetlana's here today because <laughs> it's its so important to make that conscious decision. Everything in her story that she just mentioned, you, she stopped, she thought, and yeah. she decided. And she's like, okay, from now on, this is how I'm going to deal with it. And it's not like, oh, she's fearless, as in like, she's not scared of anything. It's like, no, she's conscious about her fears. Yeah. And then she stops and then she tells herself what she needs to do. But I would love for you <laughs> to please tell 
anyone watching what to do too. So please give us five tips on how to conquer your fear. Are you ready? Yes. Number one. Number one. Rewire your brain. That's the most important part is getting out of that way that you think. Always thinking about fear, thinking about the negative things and the negative thoughts, it creates anxiety which creates more fear. Learning how to be positive and to be fearless. Okay. So it's little tools that you, you, you can find. What works for you, everybody's different. What works for you, how do you rewire your brain? For myself, I focus on the good and not the bad. That's yeah. how I rewire my brain. Because yeah. if I focus on the bad, bro, <laughs> you, it's like There's a horror lot to focus on. <laughs> Number two, develop daily mantras and positive affirmations. Yeah. Every day I tell myself how beautiful I am, how strong I am, that I can do it, mm -hmm. and that I'm an example to many that are around me. And there's a lot of people in my family, friends that look up to me. So I tell myself this every day, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Just focus. And I have tons of notebooks that I leave all over my house. I have sticky notepads and I love those stickers that you have positive affirmations on yes. and I just swear by them. And every day I tell somebody something positive. I, if I'm walking down the street and I notice I get really weird reactions sometimes, I'm like, you're so beautiful. Yeah. And we're like, I do. I mean, I can <laughs> totally do that. It's telling yourself that you're beautiful or handsome if you're a guy with yes. And no, telling yourself, you know, I'm strong, I can do this, I got this. Mm -hmm. Don't let that fear take you over. It's very easy mm -hmm. to let fear consume you. It is a lot harder to stay in the positive and in the moment, yeah. but it's better for you. So definitely daily affirmation. Number three. <laughs> do one thing every day that scares you. We all have things that we're afraid to do, whether some people are afraid to cross the street depending on their anxieties that they have. Some people are afraid to speak in front of people. Yeah. For a long time, I was afraid to speak in front of people because of my lisp, and that came from okay. the abuse that I endured. So, but I left it there. So this is a part of who I am. It makes me unique. Yeah. And I enjoy that. People are not gonna forget me yeah. when I speak. So I took, I took an opportunity when somebody called me and said, you know what, why don't you come speak in front of a high school? And I was like, I can't do this. I can't, I'm so scared to do this. I'm gonna have an anxiety attack. I'm gonna get really? depressed. I was hyperventilating, <laughs> I said, I can't. And then she's like, go through your affirmations that you always do, and I did, and I just dove into it. Wow. So every day I try and challenge myself, and even if you can't finish it, because people are like, what if I can't finish it? Just start with something that scares you every single day, do mm -hmm. one thing. Number? Four, replace fear with happiness. So it's basically about staying in the present moment, yeah. in the now, and finding whatever makes you happy. Mm -hmm. For me, it's my children. Yeah. It's what I do, because I love dancing. Yeah. <laughs> my new love. <laughs> and I focus on those things. It's very easy to focus on the things that make us scared. Yeah, it's, and it just engulfs us and consumes us completely to the point we can't focus on anything else mm -hmm. but that. So I say just focus on the present moment and just being here now and yeah. being grateful that you're just here and just be. <laughs> and I think that's what I do because everyone's like, okay, now you're faced with a current, stage four, um, terminal, all that. But then if I've been constantly thinking, oh my God, obviously my fear is that, you know, cancer takes me away. Mm -hmm. But then I could just be doing that all day, you know, thinking about that and being fearful about that. But instead, like, there, I have, I'm blessed with so much, you know, yeah. I have my family, my my loving boyfriend, my friends, and so instead of you know having that fear, I replace it with what makes me happy, and then I just live my life now because I'm here now, and no one knows what's gonna happen tomorrow. Nobody knows. Whether it's me, you, or yeah. you, we don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. So yes, definitely. Last one. Five. The bigger picture. Focusing on the bigger picture removes a lot of fear and for me, I'll give you an example My daughter has been going through a little bit of the whole, you know, separation anxiety depression because like I said My last relationship didn't work. Her father has become a little distant So she's been very upset seeing a new person around not understanding how somebody who's not her biological father can yeah. be so loving So we went out we we're going to go get some food and there's a pet store right beside it. Now I'm petrified of birds <laughs> the big birds I was like, I'm go in the pet store and inside my stomach is turning and I'm like I can't do this I can't do this yeah. and I'm like okay we're gonna do this like yeah I want to go to the pet store I want to see the doggies and the I'm like okay let's do this <laughs> she walked in first walked behind her and I see the parrot no oh, that large parrot is always out of its cage I'm like okay I got this she's looking she's like there's another one I'm like oh no 
so much, it made her happy. So it's focusing on the bigger picture. Sometimes you have to sacrifice, make mm. a sacrifice for somebody that you love. Okay. Pushing away your own fear and focusing on their happiness. So seeing my daughter light up and not so depressed and crying and upset. I, I just walked in there and I said, I got this. I'm scared, but there's so many things that she's afraid of and she's my daughter. Yeah. I'm the one that sets the example. So you know what, girl? Suck it up. Yeah. <laughs> Go see <Wow>. the bird. <laughs> bird story has a very powerful lesson. <laughs> in conclusion, the best way to conquer fear mm -hmm. is to, one, admit it, like yeah. you just did, and then face it. Head on. Head on. Yeah, go touch the bird. <laughs> <laughs> Quote. Quote <laughs> the It's time for the random question. Oh. <laughs> How do you twerk? <laughs> Everybody's like, well, you have to have a lot of, I call it butt meat, but you don't have to have a lot of it. No, no, the, the butt cannot move for me. But sometimes there's little tricks to it. Okay. You can put on like, you know, a loose fitting t-shirt, a long t-shirt. Yeah. And if you kind of clip it in a little bit in the front and okay. you jiggle your butt, like this fabric is awesome. These kind of fabrics, okay. even if you don't have much butt meat or ass meat, you put this on and okay. you shake your booty, it just goes. <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> I need to come to one of those classes. Anyone want to come to one of those classes with me? So now we have a question for you. What is your fear and how do you conquer it? Like we said, the first yeah. step is admitting it. So let us know in the comment section below. If you want to follow Svetlana, you can check out her info over here. Definitely an inspiration to many. <laughs> Thank so. you. Follow her. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share, share, share. If you want to check out my vlog, it's up there. If you want to check out the last episode, it's down there. Don't forget to subscribe because I release videos every Monday. Be patient, be kind to yourself. Be you, be imperfectly perfect. Be imperfectly perfect. Now let's twerk. <laughs> I'm looking outside like I'm a bird. <laughs>